وانس اگین صلوات اللہ محمد و آل محمد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین بار الخلائق اجمعین والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین وخاتم النبیین ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد و اہل بیت طیبین الطاہرین ولانۃ اللہ علی ادائہم اجمعین من الآن الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد رسپیکٹڈ برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان اور ڈسکشن اباؤٹ نبی موسا علیہ السلاۃ والسلام and Nabi Khidr as explained and discussed in Surah Mubarakah Kahf. Very important and interesting discussion, conversation. The last verse which we read and tried to explain says, وَأَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَا لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ وَكَانَا تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا وَكَانَا أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَا كَنْزَهُمَا رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ أَنْ أَمْرِي ذَلِكَ تَعْوِيلِ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَتِ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا This was the last portion of the communication between Nabi Musa and Khidr alayhi salam where Khidr explained why he built that wall. He said, wall belonged to two orphans in the city and under that wall was treasure for them and their parents were righteous people and Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arada rabbuk, your Lord wanted that they should come of age, become big, strong, adult, and extract this treasure which belongs to them as a mercy of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord. Ah, that is the point I wanted to emphasize. وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ أَنْ أَمْرِي I did not do this out of my own. This is the true meaning and interpretation of the things with which you could not keep your patience. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Can you move these children? This side, please. Come, come, brother. Please come and sit, inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Okay. Once again, a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, Tonight is very important discussions, honestly, very 
interesting and important discussions here. First of all, please, please, I need your attention tonight, inshallah. Last night we already replied a number of, you know, confusions. I said that last night that this communication between Musa and Khidr brings plenty of questions, doubts in the minds. Some of them we replied sufficiently last night. We explained the relationship between prophets. Who was Musa? Who was Khidr? Musa was nothing less than Khidr. Line of Khidr was something else. Line of Musa was something else. Expertise of Musa was something else. Expertise of Khidr was something else. In this communication, Musa wanted to learn from that special expertise of Khidr and therefore he acted like a student, like a humble student. But it does not mean that he was anything less than Khidr, in fact higher than Khidr. This was yesterday in detail discussed. You know, the moral of the story, as I told you, is that Ambiya prophets and Ulul Azm, high profile prophets, even when it comes to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge, it's nothing. In a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we read that when Musa met Khidr, in front of them a bird came and naturally they were near ocean. So that bird went into the ocean with its nib, you know, took some, a drop of water or something like that and flew again. And Khidr said to Musa, mm -hmm. Khidr said that, do you know what this bird is saying? Khidr said to Musa, Musa, do you know what this bird is saying? He said, no, you must tell me, you got secrets, sir. Khidr said, Ilmuka wa ilmu Musa. Allahu Akbar. Ilmuka wa ilmu Musa. Fi ilmillah illa kama akhada min qari min al ma. Say, ma ilmuka, what is your knowledge of Khidr? Bird said. And what is the knowledge of Musa? Is nothing in the knowledge of Allah, except that drop of water which I picked, which I sucked from the ocean, it's like that. It's a drop in the ocean. Hmm. All right? Uh, this is really very, very important to understand. But anyway, so this question is resolved. Now next question, which is, even more difficult question that how all these things, you know, Musa did. I already raised this question. How can, sorry, Khizr make hole in the boat of somebody else without his permission? How he can kill someone? Some people, some of us serene, some interpreters of Quran tried to resolve this issue by, you know, I will say forcing something. What they say? You know, how you can make hole in a boat of somebody else? It's other people's property. You have no right. So they say, no, probably, you know, he knew that the owner of this boat, which is miskeen people, poor people who work in ocean, who work on sea, they will be happy with me if I do that. Because if I don't make a hole and I don't make this boat defective, the whole boat will be gone. 
So he was sure that they are happy of making this problem. So therefore he made hole, and nothing wrong with it. That's one justification. Okay, but what about killing somebody? How you can kill someone who has not committed a crime? Some people come and give this justification. They say, no, no, no. Khazar didn't kill a young man. That is a, you know, wording of Quran. No, no, no. He was already quite a big man. He was maybe in his still teenage or whatever, but he was adult. He was not non-mukallaf. He was mukallaf. And he already committed a crime of murder. He already was transgressor and out of hand. And therefore, it was right of Nabi Khizr to kill him, to cut his throat, for example. And the third one, okay, that is very easy to build a wall in a city or in a place where people were not very good to you. So what? People not good to you, but you can be good with them. This is great. This is sacrifice. This is... High akhlaq, it's a better value in morality. So what's wrong with it? So that's also solved. So in this way, they want to resolve the problem. But honestly, no, that is not the answer. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. With the, with the, you know, this excuse that tomorrow somebody will take over this whole boat, you making hole in a boat of somebody else without his permission? No, man. That is not something acceptable. And you are saying this boy was already a killer or murderer? No, Quran doesn't say like that. That is ex exactly against Quran. Quran says, Musa and Khazr went on to travel, came out of the boat. Then they lucky a gulam and they met a young man, a young child, and he killed Simple as that. He was not murderer, he was not adult, maybe, he, no. That is very difficult to accept. How somebody you can, you know what you call it, preemptive, huh? preemptive strike. Before they attack you, you attack. Before they committed a crime, you can punish them. You cannot punish somebody before somebody has committed a crime. So that reasoning is also, brothers and sisters, no, not really very satisfying. This is what we call it fiqhi justification, legal justification somehow, but does not do justice honestly to the situation. Question is still very firmly there. Why? Now we come to another very, very important and major point tonight. I hope our brothers who are not present here will be able to hear. This is important discussion. That discussion is that in this world which we live, we have two systems. Two systems. One is called Takween, another one is called Tashri. We got system of creation and we got system of legislation. These two systems are ruling this world. We got two systems. Creation, kun fayakun, be, and it will be there. Thakwin, creation. What Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does in this world. And the phase of creation. And then we got legislation. What is legislation? Law. Hmm? Law. Law means Sharia. Sharia means, you know, Allah has made some laws. Now sometimes Allah makes law, sometimes non Allah. Human being make law, but law. For example, uh, Allah made a law that drinking wine is banned. Allah made a law paying zakat or tax on your money compulsory. Allah made a law 
that you must perform five times prayers. Allah made a law that if you want to marry, these are the conditions. Allah made a law that if you want to divorce, these are the conditions. Allah made a law that if you commit a crime, you will be punished. If you commit a murder, death penalty is there for you. If you steal something or you commit theft, your hand must be cut. For example, you commit some other crime, you must get lashes, for example. You get imprisonment, for example. Whatever. This is law. This is called law. Legislation. Right? Sometimes, as I just want to give you examples, this law comes from Allah. Legislation comes from Allah. Sometimes law is human being law, like South African law. It says, do this, do this, do that. If you do that, this is the punishment. Oh, whatever, detail, law. If you cross a red robot, red signal, red traffic light, fine, you know, things like that. Please, carefully. Human being got no business in creation. Allah created sun. Allah created moon. Allah created us. Allah takes us through different situations in our life. One day we are happy. One day we are not happy. One day we are healthy. One day we are sick. One day we get trouble and difficulty. One day we make this accident. One day we lose our loved one. One day we are very happy. One day, you know, lottery opens and we become millionaire overnight. One day we lose everything. That's happening not in our hand. That's world of creation. Behind the scene, Allah is doing whatever happening. Are you with me? Both systems, please listen carefully. Both systems are in harmony. No doubt. The way Allah is running this system, please, please, I need your attention. Very delicate point I would like to explain to you. We call it in our philosophical or logical or technical term, Nizam Ahsan. Means what? The best system. The best possible system. In other words, this world is running based upon a system which is possibly the best which is possibly the best, Nizam Ahsan. Hmm? It, it goes on like that. Sun rises, okay. Sometimes disasters happen, like now recently you saw what happened in Durban, in Natal, flood. Nobody created flood, huh? other than few conspiracy theories, they're talking nonsense, but other than that, flood, nobody created flood, huh? Allah created flood. But that flood resulted in disaster, so what? That's Allah's creation. You understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, corona came, for example, Bismillah. I don't know, earthquake comes, Bismillah. Opposite to that happens. Sometimes when rain is needed, rain comes, brings greenery, brings good situation. That's creation. That is the world of creation. So we got world of law, system of law, legislation, and we got le system of creation. Please listen carefully. I am repeatedly saying, system of creation is purely in hand of Allah. For example, I let me give you an example. Quran says, mm -hmm. And we will test you with what? With fear, with lack of fruits, and we will test you, we will test you, and we will test you. For what? To see that ayyukum ahsanu amala. Who are you from amal point of view, from deed point of view, better? So Allah tests us. Huh? Allah puts us in difficulties. Hmm? Quran is saying, we will test you with the fear. Huh? We will test you with the loss of income. We will test you from even 
loss of life, difficult situation, we will test you. Right or not? This is Allah's job. But, now, now listen, please carefully, this is the point. Can anyone or even prophet can come and test people <laughs> by throwing difficulty and hardships on them? No, no not possible. Not possible. He said, I will kill your son because I want to see that how much sabr you have. <laughs> Never that is possible. Never that is possible. Huh? Or, for example, we read that sometimes a small mistake results in disasters. La in shakartum la azidan nakum. If you will be thankful, I will increase. If you will be ungrateful, my azab is terrible. Now if somebody, for example, was not thankful for what Allah has given him, what happens? In this world of creation, he sees the result of that. All of a sudden, he was not thankful of his good health, he gets sick. He was not thankful of his wealth, he gets poor. He was not thankful of what Allah has given him, all of a sudden he ends up in a bigger trouble. Uh, are you with me or not? This is called Tarke Ola. Very small, it's not a haram, it's not, he didn't commit any mistake. In a sense of a mistake, but this, this attitude, this behavior of this person results in certain situation in the world of creation. But can a prophet or me or anybody can do like that? Can I say, because brother you were not thankful, I will pull away all your income today. I will make you poor. I will do this. No, I cannot do that. But Allah does it. You know, Allah does it. Even on the prophets, even on the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it happens like, why Nabi Yunus, for example, went into the stomach of whale. Why, for example, Nabi Ayyub went through that difficult situation? And so on and so on. But these are many examples. So we cannot do it. Allah does it. Please listen carefully. We cannot do it. Allah does it. That is, what is that? That is world of creation. What we can do is based upon System of legislation. Yes, there's a crime you committed, we can punish you for that crime. Simple as that. Uh, but I cannot, you know, for example, we know Quran says whole story that all the difficulties and hardships which come in our life, they are, there's a philosophy in it. There's a significance, there's a reason for all the difficulties and hardships. What is the reason of those hardships and difficulties? The, the philosophy of hardships and difficulties is to give you sabr, to give you power, to give you, you know, more iman. Now, can I put you in difficulty because I want you to have more sabr? No, 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 that's not possible. I can't do that. I said, let me push you into the ocean, let you go drown in the ocean. So this difficulty, you're going to get sabr. No, I can't do that. So there is a system of creation and there is a system of what we call it legislation. Please listen carefully. System, please, please. System of creation. Almighty Allah's in hand. Or if Allah appoints somebody to does it is not based upon what we see and what we saw or what we witnessed with our own eyes. It is based upon a different criteria. It is based upon on a different level. Are you with me or not? Huh? We are saying, listen please carefully, whatever, so whatever Nabi Khizr did when he made hole in the boat, when he killed that young boy, when he built that wall, in all three cases, 
he was commanded to do that by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Based upon that taqween, based upon that system of creation, not system of legislation. Legislation does not justify that you make a hole in the boat of somebody else. Legislation does not satisfy, does not justify, does not give you reason, does not give you license to kill somebody preemptively before he killed anybody, you punish him. Baba, you can't punish somebody. He has not murdered anybody. Tomorrow he will murder. But in creation it is possible. Because in creation you can see that this boy is going in that direction and he is going to become a murderer and he is going to become a kafir and he is going to push his parents toward kufr, towards transgression, toward destruction. Now in that system, if Allah commanded you to do something, you do it on that level. Are you with me? Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Nabi Khedr, whatever he did, he did it based upon Allah's command. And therefore, I'm repeatedly saying, last part of the, this whole discussion in Surah Mubarakah Kahf, when Nabi Khedr concluded what he said, Wama fa'altuhu min amri. Baba, this is not my job. I didn't do it out of my own. Zawalikat, this is Allah's command which I just followed. You know, this is not me. This is Allah's command what I followed. So, actions of Khidr were based upon taqween and actions of Musa based upon tashri. And both of them are right. Now, you cannot say Musa was wrong to criticize, and Khizr was right, or Khizr was wrong and Musa, no, 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 both of them right, because both of them are looking at things from two different angles, on two different criterias. For Musa to keep quiet in front of injustice happening like that, that you are making hole in property of other people, or you are killing a young boy without a reason, Musa must shout, Mus Musa must be critical, because Musa's expertise is Sharia. And Sharia says you cannot interfere in the property of other people. You cannot kill innocent boy. And based upon criticism of Musa is very valid criticism. But Nabi Khizr action is also right. Because his action is not based upon legislation on based upon law. His action is based upon command of Allah. His based is action upon taqween. Law of creation, system of creation. The secrets they are behind, which we don't see. He can see Allah has given him. Ayatollah Jawadi Amali, very beautifully he says, that amazing. Look at, you know, don't say that Nabi Musa was anything less. No, 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 no. People come and try to justify how can, so Musa was wrong, why Musa was criticizing, why Musa was having no sabr. No, my brother. What Musa did, it was correct. What Khizr did, it was also correct. So, but why then Musa was apologetic? Musa was apologetic because he was in front of teacher. This was adab of Musa. This was etiquette of Musa. This was akhlaq of Musa. This is a quality of Musa. And Musa came to learn something from that world, not from this world. But he was at the same time being responsible for Sharia, law of Allah, was compelled to speak, to be critical, to not to keep quiet and silent in front of injustice and oppression, at least apparently. This is the point. Ayatollah Jawadi Amali, very beautifully, he says that amazing 
in this whole communication if you look at carefully musa never blamed khizr he blamed the action itself fa'il fail and fa'il doer and deed doer and deed sometime you have a problem with doer and sometimes you have a problem with what he does deed now this great mufassiratul jawadi amuli he says musa did not have a problem with fa'il with doer musa's problem was with action and what is action action is the apparent face of a reality hidden from the eyes of musa exposed in the eyes of khizr if musa had a problem with khizr and if musa didn't agree with the actions of khizr after watching that he is doing such a terrible things killing a young boy without a reason musa should have left musa should have said go i can't walk with you you are a big oppressor but musa continued it means that musa was not saying oh khizr you are wrong musa was saying please khizr explain to me what is the secret of this very very strange action you are taking ha salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha are you with me or not so in this way is the best way to resolve this all this conflict and problem no my brother nabi khazr was expert of tilme ta'wil or interpretation or new but, but due to that ilm al dunni which brother said also asked what is the difference between ilm al nazari and ilm al dunni ilm al nazari is iktisabi means you have to go to school and get it ilm al dunni you don't have to give to school allah gives it to you directly oh. exposure ilm al dunni is exposure ilm al nazari is just you go and get it through argument through discussions through school through book through all it's not there you must understand that very very important in fact aitul ajabadi amali goes further he say it's not far fetched listen please keep that's now another very important point it's not very far fetched for it was just a play which musa and khizr put together for us to understand that look this world which you look around is not the way you look around there is a face which you see and there is a face behind one represented external face and the other one represented internal face it was for us and as i said last night and now i want to repeat it again and i want to take you further in a much more deeper and a very delicate discussion tonight look brother let me tell you this story of nabi khizr and musa is one of the most as you know what we call it coded stories full of secrets full of secrets and therefore mufassirin ulama and especially urafa those people in the valleys of irfan and tasawwuf and so on they are gone to great extent to explore what is this all they believe this is all codes ha huh? the way it has been explained is not like that that musa came with his friend and there were two gulfs or two oceans gulf of uh, eliat and gulf of suez and they meet at red sea and they reach to uh, this is all example this is all symbolism reality is something else these are all codes these are all you know passwords truth behind these passwords is something else hmm. very it, it's it's very a story which has so much or era orafa and sufia and those are drawn in of course they are gone out of the way also lot of deviation in tasawwuf in this regard one of the points inshallah i will speak tonight and mention it about it but they they, they are gone far away they are gone far away but truth is this without any doubt 
that this story is full of asrar, full of secrets, full of uh, uh, things which we maybe will not be able to understand, you know. And therefore, they say, now listen carefully what they say, they say that, you know, these two oceans, for example, now listen carefully, these two oceans are not oceans of, for example, Gulf of Suez and Gulf of Eliot or whatever. No, no, no. These two oceans are, it means that world of Imkan and world of Wujub. World of uh, Imkan and world of Wujub. World of Imkan is what? World of possibility. What is world of possibility? Poverty. What is poverty? Dependency. Ah, because we are all poor. We are all dependent. Because we have all possible existence. And other ocean is wujub, necessity, compulsory existence. And the meeting point, maqam ahadiyat. Ah, that Majmaul Bahrain is not meeting of two oceans, but it's meeting of imkan with tawheed means you cannot, you cannot be a student of Khizr. You cannot get to the secrets of this world. You cannot have exposure to alam e until you don't come out from alam of jism and alam of imkan to alam e wujub and alam e tawheed. And Maghom e ahadiyat. is status of unity. Until you don't reach to that status of unity. Sorry. You can't. You can't. Ahl hmm. Arfan, they believe that there are three degrees. There are three degrees or three levels for Ambiya. Number one is Bashariyat. Means they are insan, they are human being like anyone else. Then they believe there is a maqam of risalat. Please listen carefully. They all of them are messengers. They all of them are messengers. Okay, that is one. This is Almighty Allah has given them to convey the message. And then that's not, that's all. No, they believe in the third position for Ambiya. And what is that? maqam vilayat maqam vilayat maqam vilayat what it is when you travel with your heart in the valleys of marifatullah allahu akbar and that status is given to certain people according to their capacity according to their accommodation according to how much they can take it allahu akbar they say here in this story, Khizr is, Khizr is, remember, he says, Khizr is symbol of batin. Numa uh, de batin. Khizr is symbol of batin, which is Shairo Suluk, which is a spiritual journey and warfare. And Musa is symbol of outside, external, you know, which is Sharia, which is Sharia. Now these people, Sufis, go behind. They say, Shariat and Tariqat. We got Sharia in the life and we got Tariqa, which is in the heart. So they say, Khizr, symbol of Tariqat. Musa, symbol of Shariat. Allahu Akbar. Musa came to Khizr, not because he was anything less than Khizr. He was above Khizr. He was higher than Khizr. But in Sharia, but when it came to tariqa, when it comes to internal purity and that journey which opens your eyes to truth and secrets of this world, Allahu Akbar, there he required some studentship. There he required to be a follower, to be a learner. And therefore, so crazily, so crazily, so lovingly, he rushed to find Khizr. That he said, if I spend my whole life looking for Khizr, I don't mind. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.
but naturally listen listen but naturally this traveling and this journey without ustad not possible without ustad not possible half is a shiraz what he said kath in marhale bi ham rahiye khazr makun zulamat asto zulamat asto betars az khatare gumrahi never try to travel this path without khazr i said khazr become like a you know headline khazr become like a symbol of your spiritual guru of your spiritual leader if you are a spiritual guide he says hafiz shiraz qat in marhale bi ham rahiye khazr makun never try to travel this path without accompanying khazr zulamat is it's too dark betas be be afraid be fearful from the danger of getting lost yes in this journey lot of people get lost in place of reaching allah they end up by shaitan and salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad this this is important so core message again let me come back to that point core message very important message is this from this story beside number of other messages that we live in a world which we don't know a lot about it what is behind all that is happening around us we don't know we look at the face value difficulties comes and hardships come to us and we complain we say why 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 but we don't know that this difficulty was good for us last night i say asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khairun lakum maybe you don't like something but it is good for you and maybe you like some you like something and it is bad for you you don't know ayatullah jawadi amuli again in his dars of tafsir narrated this story beautiful very simple his teacher ayatullah ha ilahi qumshai rizwanullah alayhi his teacher of philosophy in tehran great arif great scholar oh somebody you know with maqamat e manavi he says that we used to attend his you know lectures of philosophy in tehran and he used to have a son who was in qum also very big alim used to teach in qum while we were busy in our lectures and lessons in tehran his son who was in qum and he loved him of course a lot he was apple of his eyes and everything he got very very sick terribly ill okay and they brought him tehran they brought him to tehran because he was very sick he said our teacher allah akbar ha ilahi qum shay hafaz rizwanullah alay he used to look at his son and he used to say son don't worry don't worry if this sickness came to you we don't know what is you know behind that and then he used to read for his son this verse wa ammas safinatu allahu akbar fal ghulamain yati fal yatimain allahu akbar he used to read these verses of surah mubarak ay kahf ammas safinatu that safina the boat it belongs to two people it belongs to some people who used to work poor poor and they used to work on ocean and there was a king who wanted to take over who wanted to usurp all the ships and i made a hole so it will become defective and nobody will be able to nobody will be have a eye on the ship huh? to save the whole ship made a small hole in the ship he used to say to his son son if you are sick don't worry don't worry you don't know maybe if you are better you are in a bigger trouble you don't understand i don't understand what is happening in this world salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha yes. so this is the message of this story 
This is the message of this. I so many different messages, but this is the message of this story. That we should not be complaining, we should not be nagging, we should not be questioning. You know, some people in their life, trouble after trouble, difficulty after difficulty, hardship after difficulty, they will get tired and say, why only us? Why we? Why not them? Look at them, they are always okay. We are always in trouble. We get sick, we get death, we get problem, we get trouble. We they don't know. You don't know. Wa amma safina to Allah akbar. Wa amma al jadar. Wa amma al ghulam. You don't know. You don't know what is happening behind. What are the secrets behind? As I said, this story has this extremely important message, which changes our world view, which changes the way we look at things. You know. We look at different things. We look at difficulties. We look at flood. Let us come to the example. Flood destroyed so many lives. Flood brought so many disasters, so many hardships for so many people. It's very negative, right or not? But a man with this world view, who believes in Allah, who believes in nizam e taqween said, no, there is a reason for it. It is equaling, it is equilibrium with the nizam e taqween which is based upon nizam e ahsan which is based upon the possible best system. Now, I don't have really time, already 10 past 9, I wanted to finish early tonight. We don't understand, you know, this is really very important. nizam e ahsan what is the best possible system? Best possible system means, I always, to make it very easy, when I speak to brothers, I say, Everything, brother, comes in package. It's a package. You can't get have everything nice. It's a package. Package means what? Something good, something bad. Something difficult, something easy. Something nice, something not so nice. But nizam ahsan means what? That majority of it is nice. Nice part. The good part is over, always overwhelming the bad part. This is nizam ahsan. Allah made this system based upon cause and effect. Now, result of cause and effect is this, that if there will be cause, effect will be there. If cause is flood is there, disaster will be there. You cannot avoid. But then it is balanced based upon Allah's command by bringing other goods along with it. So whenever you see the difficulties and hardships and disasters and earthquakes and floods and pandemics and this and this, you see, beside that, along with that, unlimited amount of good also coming out. So when you look on the whole, again, holistic approach, when you look at a broader picture, bigger picture, the whole picture, you realize that a small problem, that a small tragedy, that a small difficulty was nothing compared to the greater good which we got out of it. Salawat Allah, Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. As I said, every, every aspect of this story is, you know, secret. Now, on that point, let me just speak. That some Sufia, you know, try to exploit it. Some Sufis say that maqam vilayat as I said, maqam bashariyat all of them are insan, human being. maqam risalat they are all Rasul, messengers of Allah, responsible to convey message of Allah to the people. maqam vilayat or a status of vilayat means they are on a level where they have exposure to the secrets of the world, the reasons and the world behind this world. Okay, that's maqam vilayat Then they say maqam vilayat is higher than maqam risalat Maqam, status of vilayat is higher than maqam of risalat So which means what? Wali is greater than Rasul. Means what? Means now they come and create to their own commercial use. They say, your peer, your murshad, you have all these dramas which they got. Huh? He is higher than Rasul. And you are supposed to follow him, close eyes, like Musa in front of Khizr. Well, this is a complete exploitation. No, no, no. 
Quran gives examples about Nabi Khidr and how Quran explains and defines who was Khidr. Abdan min ibadina, ataynahu min rahmatan min indina, allamnahu min ladunna ilma. Where are those people and where are those so-called murshids and peers and waliullahs and all those, you know, they got all that whole system and shop of their own. No, 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 not at all. maqam e salat is nothing less than maqam e vilayat Nothing less than maqam e vilayat maqam e vilayat and maqam e salat are both very high and both of them are very exclusive. So this exploitation, of course, in this type of, you know, using these concepts, you know, is, is not right. As I said, every aspect of this story is that. One question quickly here is that uh, when Nabi Khizr built that wall and he explained what was the reasoning of this uh, wall, he is busy building what he said, there's a treasure hidden under this wall which belongs to two orphans and their father was a good man and if this water, wall collapses, this will be exposed and people will steal. What was that treasure? Allahu Akbar. Now Mufassirin go in great detail to speak about what was that treasure? Gold, silver, jewelry, or no something else. Now, you know, one hadith from Imam Sadiq, and I conclude. Imam Sadiq, alayhi salatu wasalam, says that treasure was neither gold, nor silver, nor diamond, nor any jewelry. It was a plate. It was a plate. On that plate, four sentences were written La ilaha illallah, man aykana bal maut, lam yazhak. La ilaha illallah. Somebody who is sure about death, he will never laugh. And who is sure about accountability, his heart will never be happy. And somebody who is sure, certain about qadr, the honesty of Almighty Allah, decision of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not be scared except Allah. This was the treasure. Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We learned so much from these verses. Just one or two points and conclude. One very important issue. To find, just now I said to you, to find ustad, teacher, capable, right is important. I already explained to you. Number two, very important. Abdan min ibadina. I already explained already when I was re busy reading that verse. Abdan min ibadina. Core of knowledge is ubudiyat. Core of knowledge is being abd. Another lesson. Knowledge for what? Mimma ullimta roshda. What you will teach me or teach, you will teach roshda. That will result in my growth. Knowledge for not knowledge only. Knowledge which will take me further. Which will let me grow. That is really extremely important. And all other issues which we of course discussed uh, on the different occasions from this great story of Nabi Musa and Khizr alayhi salatu wa salam wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ahli baytihi tahirin salawat.